To use BabelFX, the localization framework, within your own source code, the first thing you're going to need to do is download the BabelFX SWIC in the library. So let's go over to the site babelfx.org and we can see that there's a fair bit of information here. But one of the most prominent things is this button here for getting the source code. If we click on that, it will take us to the GitHub repository where we could then download the latest version of the ActionScript 3 Flex Library for BabelFX. I've already done that. Let's go back to our Flash Builder. And here's our framework for BabelFX. So I can just open, double click on this to open it. And I can compile that with the same version of the SDK that my custom application is using. Now that we have the BabelFX framework, the next thing we want to do is actually include that framework for use within this application. I can come over to the build path. I could just drop in the SWIC from the build directory of that other library project, or I can just include the entire project. So for now, let's just include the entire project in here. Great. Now I have the BabelFX library referenced here. The next thing we want to do is actually build a localization map that will define all the bundles that are being, the, uh, the strings that are being used and retrieved from the bundles and where they're going to be injected into. So let's come back up here and let's create a, another package. And let's call this one map. So this is just a map package in the L10N directory here zoom in a bit. We'll call this map. It's fantastic. Now I want to create a localization map. Unfortunately the Flash Builder actually has a defect. And let me show you what I mean. If I went into here and I said, listen, I want to create a new MXML component. That's great. This is normally how I would do it. And I would say localization map. This could be anything you want. I like to call it localization map because it clearly defines what it is that it's doing. Now this localization map needs to actually extend or subclass the locale map that's in the framework, the BabelFX SWIC. Unfortunately, you can't do that within this control here. It will not show non-display objects. So if I try to say locale map, nothing will happen. What I can do, however, is actually just specify a canvas for now. Hit finish. And now we are in, we've opened up the localization map. And I can get rid of all this here. We could try to do something like that, and that won't work either. So this is a bit of tedious issue here. Um, this You'll only encounter this one time when you're trying to create the locale map. So what we can do is come over to a template I prepared and just do this. I'll copy it. I'll come back here to, and I'll just paste it in. Now we have our locale map. That's the, sub, the parent class. The localization map here is the subclass. I've set logging to be true, so it should dump to the console all trace statements that are uh, activity that is happening within the BabelFX engine, and you'll see that in a few minutes. And that's all we have to do. This here is the namespace for the BabelFX library. Now that we've gotten a, the shell for our localization map, the next thing we need to do is, is specify injectors. The injectors are responsible for listening for content, listening for UI instances, and mapping between the UI instances and the actual bundles that we're going to be using. So I want to create a resource injector. There we go. I want to, the bundle I want to manage is main. Remember the main property file. And this time the target I want to listen to is a UI, a display object that's being created. So I want to listen for all targets of 
the getting started application. It's not in a subview, it's just the application itself. Normally I would have a resource injector for each large view or each specific view and then I could inject into those. So I'm going to come in here and I'll say let's just do getting started. Actually it's BabelFX. There we go. Now I have a resource injector that's listening for any instances of getting started, the application to be created, and in our case there's only one, and it's going to listen for that instance, and when that instance, the creation complete, finishes, then it's going to use this bundle to do some injections. Now how does it know which injections to use? Well that here's where we have to use a resource setter. This class says I'm going to set uh, for the key, and remember we said our key was, let's say, label title. For that key, the value of that key, I'm going to use to set into the property for the target. And the key that I want here is label title dot text. That's great. Now if I don't specify a type, the type is going to be a string here. I could do that. So it's a string that I'm going to be injecting in. I don't have to do that. That's the default. So I can just do that. Fantastic. Let's do one more for the other one. And here I'm actually going to look back here, and this is label. So this one was t text, and this one's label. And in fact, what I can do, this is a nice trick sometimes, I can drag this over here. And let's just move this over. And now I can see, in fact, if I want to make it even easier, I could bring it, drag it out of the bottom. There we go. So it's button go to dot label is the is the property that I want to update with the value content from this in the bundle for this key. That makes sense. Okay, and that is it right there. So now I've said I've specified a localization map that will listen for instances of the BabelFX getting started application, and use this bundle main, and look up this key value and this key value and inject it into these properties, runtime properties. Superb. Now the other thing I can do is because I'm using the localization map, I can actually move this bundle specifier and I can actually put it here. Excellent. The next thing that I will want to do, now that I've set up my localization map, is I need to use an instance of that localization map. So I can come back up here and I can just say localization map. I like to put my namespaces with my tag. It keeps things really clean. I don't even have to give it an ID. I just have to create an instance of it. That is it. That's all you have to do to use a localization map to inject the properties in. Of course now remember that we need to trigger the change in the resource manager. So if I go back to this other one here, the getting started, let's bring this back up here now for the sake of simplicity. I'm just going to sneak and grab this one here. We'll come back to the button. So again I've just said, hey when you click change the resource so the, the locale that we really want is for Portuguese. The localization map will work behind the scenes and inject that content in. So let's run this. If we debug it even, let's do, go with this one here. It's going to compile. It's going to run. Look at that. That's fantastic. If I come back to the application, I can see here in the console a lot of output that was happening here within the BabelFX engine. We can see that the resource injector getting started with BabelFX, 
we'll go to next locale. What we can also see here, if I actually maximize this, is that the BabelFX engine actually ran during startup of the application. So it actually injected the English content into my UI elements during startup. And then when I clicked on the button for Portuguese, it re-injected the Portuguese versions into that. And you can see that here. Here's the Portuguese. Okay. And that's it. That's as simple as it gets to actually localize your applications. All the injection requirements and all the lookups for the in the resource bundles are all happened happen inside the localization map. Now we can do one other thing if we'd like to add a little flair and simplicity to our application. Let's come back to this here. Instead of adding some sort of click somewhere in our UI, why don't we do something a little bit different? Why don't we add a language bar and let the language bar handle notifying the localization map and the resource manager and all that. And the language bar is the only thing that, that will change our locales. And we could even, if we wanted to, add a language bar that was smart and during startup detect the operating system language preference and switch that on the fly too. So here in the extras directory I have something with called a language bar. I'm just going to copy the whole view package and put it into our L10 here. So now there's our language bar. And up here, I'm going to add that language bar. Okay. In fact, let's go to the design mode. And let's put it down here. Great. And if we run this, now we can see switching back and forth between English and Portuguese. And it's as simple as that to add localization features to your Flex application. In fact, the reason, the real reason to add BabelFX features to your Flex application is that it scales very well. As you add, create more and more views and more complex hierarchies, BabelFX is one class, the localization map. You specify the injectors and the resource setters, and it handles everything else for you. Your application code never knows anything about localization or multilingual features. So check out BabelFX. You can also come down here and we have a online samples at the and also in GitHub. The source code is available. And last but not least, you can also go to some blog articles and check out some of the articles. Thank you.